Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of SD Locks SCP Readings. This is Shaggy Dreadlocks. Today we're going to be reading SCP-2207 Dimensional Razor Item Number SCP-2207 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-2207 is to be contained in a small cardboard box filled with foam within a standard safe class storage locker when not used for testing. All testing with SCP-2207 is to be done in Containment Laboratory 8803. After testing, Containment Laboratory 8803 is to be decontaminated and checked for damage. As of Test 42, exploration by D-Class and or Foundation personnel beyond SCP-2207-1 instances are preemptively denied. Correction: Disregard any testing parameters. As of Incident 2207-01, all tests involving SCP-2207 are to be suspended. Description SCP-2207 is a brand disposable plastic knife. Testing has indicated that, outside of SCP-2207's anomalous properties, it is identical to other non-anomalous disposable plastic knives. When the cutting edge of SCP-2207 reaches a minimum speed of 6 meters per second relative to its surroundings, it severs local space-time, creating a rift that connects to a random alternate universe. These rifts are designated SCP-2207-1. These rifts typically last approximately 5 minutes without outside intervention, and the length is equal to the distance that SCP-2207 traveled at or above 6 meters a second. Instances remain stationary after creation but may be widened by pulling along the edges. Instances may be artificially kept open for a maximum of 24 hours by placing any material across the instance's threshold. After 24 hours, the SCP-2207-1 instance closes, severing any material crossing the threshold. Exploration Log The following is a partial, abridged exploration log. See document 2207-24 for a full log of tests, explorations, and recovered material from SCP-2207-1 instances. In all tests, a mechanical arm was used to create SCP-2207-1 instances, and the instance was then propped open by a set of metal braces. It has been later determined that at least three other alternate realities accessed by different SCPs, including SCP-1165, may be the result of prior testing with SCP-2207. Test number 10. Exploration 1. Type of exploration. D-Class only, equipped with a standard recovery harness and cable, a radio-video umbilical, and Level C Personal Protective Equipment. Test time was 24 hours. Overview The breach point of Universe 10 is in a hallway with white walls, fluorescent lighting, and tiled floor. A set of double doors is on the opposite side. The D-Class does not report any unusual sensations upon breaching the SCP instance and is instructed to pass through the double doors. One minute into the test, the D-Class reports that he is no closer to the doors than when he started. The video confirms this. However, 84 meters of recovery cable and umbilical have been fed through the instance, and visual inspection from outside the instance indicates that the D-Class has walked halfway through the hallway. He is instructed to keep moving forward, and complies despite mild protest. After two more minutes, the D-Class reports that he is still no closer to the doors. The video confirms this, 
and an additional 168 meters of cable and umbilical have been fed through the instance. Visual inspection from outside the instance indicates that the D-Class had still not moved more than halfway through the hallway. At this point, he is recalled. From outside the instance, he is seen to turn around. The D-Class reports that the portal is much further away, with video indicating a distance of approximately 250 meters. The D-Class runs towards the portal while the recall cable is activated. The D-Class is visibly seen to run in place from the exterior of the instance. 252 meters of recovery cable had been recalled after 30 seconds, filling the spool. Research personnel begin to physically pull on the recovery cable, trying to manually recall the D-Class. He reports that he is no closer than before to the portal. Three minutes and 30 seconds into the test, the D-Class is instructed to stop moving, and given the explanation that technical difficulties compounded by his movement are hampering recovery efforts. An additional 108 meters of recovery cable and video umbilical is manually recalled over the next 30 seconds, with researchers noting that they don't feel any additional weight on the other end. Video and observation from the instance indicates that the D-Class looks behind him. The video shows that the double doors appear to be much further behind him than before, and the D-Class begins to run towards the portal. Ten hours into the test, the D-Class has largely stopped his attempts at self-recovery. During this period of time, he is seen to alternate between running, walking, jogging, and sobbing. The exploration ends after a period of 24 hours due to the forced closure of the instance. The metal braces, recovery cable, and the radio video umbilical are severed. The D-Class is not recovered, though an additional Redacted. meters of recovery cable and radio video umbilical were recovered. Examination of the removed cable and umbilical indicate no deviances from foundation standard, apart from the anomalously added length. Test number 25, exploration number 15, exploration type. D-Class only, equipped with an EEG cap, nope. EEG sensors were added to the exploration protocols after the events of test number 18. See document 2207-24 for more information. They are also equipped with a standard recovery harness and cable, a radio video umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time was 16 minutes, 32 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 25 is a small alley of a large, unnamed city. The D-Class reports a sensation of vertigo upon breaching the instance. During the immediate stages of exploration, materials are recovered, mostly refuse, and the D-Class reports three additional vertigo-like sensations and an occasional stare from inhabitants of Universe 25. The latter is determined not to be a breach of exploration protocol, as the D-Class is dressed in level C PPE. At approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds into the test, the D-Class reports a fifth sensation of vertigo, and levels of ambient light begin to notably diminish. The D-Class looks up, without being directed, towards the sun. The sun appears to be undergoing a solar eclipse. However, the occluding object does not pass over the sun, but instead appears to originate from the center of the sun. After 1 minute and 30 seconds, the unknown object has fully occluded the sun, including the corona. The D-Class is ordered to come back, but is unable to as the unknown occluding object appears to attract objects on the ground. Video indicates the D-Class, as well as other individuals, vehicles, and other objects are lifted into the air, moving towards the unknown occluding object. The attracting force does not extend past the portal. There is no meaningful communication from the D-Class during this period of time. The recall cable is activated, and the D-Class is recovered within one minute. The metal braces propping the portal open are removed, and the instance is allowed to close naturally.
Test number 38. Exploration number 28. Exploration type. D class only. Equipped with an EEG cap, recovery harness and cable, along with a radio video umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time was 2 hours, 38 minutes, and 18 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 38 appears to be in a farmland, currently growing a crop visually similar to maize or corn. The D-Class begins limited recovery of crop samples. After one hour, the D-Class returns with gathered samples and passes through the portal. Research personnel note that all samples are of low quality, heavily blighted, and easily destroyed by light handling. The D-Class claims that none of the samples she recovered were blighted when questioned. Review of video confirms her account. She is then sent to recover new samples from Universe 38 after being equipped with 24 resealable biosafe sample bags. Upon breaching the portal instance at 1 hour and 30 minutes into the test, she reports that all plant life within 2 meters of the portal have withered. This is confirmed by the video feed. She notes that the wind speed is increasing, and discovers a structure similar to a barn at the 2 hour mark. She is instructed to go inside. The interior of the barn-like structure does not significantly differ from barns and working farms being used for storage for a variety of tools and packaged plant matter visually similar to hay. She is instructed to gather samples of the hay-like plant matter and two easily carried tools. She then travels to the upper floor of the barn-like structure and approaches a window. The location of the breach point of Universe 38 is visible due to the withered plants surrounding the instance. Observation indicates that the wind is rapidly spreading the withering or blighting effect. The D-Class reports that she hears a noise from the lower level of the barn and investigates. A male individual, wearing blue overalls, a gray t-shirt, a hat made of a straw-like material, and carrying a rifle of unknown make and model is seen inspecting the recovery cable and radio video umbilical. The D-Class is instructed to switch her radio to free range mode and press the quick release button on the recovery harness. She complies and is instructed to leave the barn and return to the portal. The site's armed containment response unit is called to Containment Laboratory 8803 as a precautionary measure. At 2 hours and 23 minutes, she reports that she had left the barn but the individual had spotted her and started firing his rifle. Gunshots and yelling in an unknown language can be heard over the radio. The recall cable is activated. She reaches the portal at 2 hours and 30 minutes into the exploration. The unknown individual is seen to enter the withered or blighted area and falls to the ground before the site's armed containment response unit can fire. The individual's body is subsequently seen to rapidly mummify. The D-Class is instructed to recover the unknown individual's body and eventually complies. The portal is allowed to naturally close. The second set of samples do not show signs of the blighting effect that the first had. The unknown individual was found to be carrying identification in a wallet, along with several examples of paper currency and a set of photos, presumably of family members. All information in the wallet is in an unknown and currently undeciphered script. The recovered tools were determined to be functionally identical to a dulled hand scythe and a hacksaw. The D-Class died shortly after the test, mummifying 30 minutes after the exploration, likely due to the blighting effect. The effect was found not to be communicable from her body the body of the unknown individual from Universe 38, or any of the recovered material. Test number 42. Exploration number 32. Type of exploration. Standard D-Class test with standard equipment. Test time was 24 hours. Overview. The breach point of Universe 42 is a grassy field 
with the skyline of an unknown city visible approximately two to three kilometers away from the breach point. The D-Class is instructed to pass through the portal. The D-Class is seen to breach the portal and subsequently appears to freeze in place once fully through. The video feed is still operational and requests to ascertain the D-Class's status are unanswered. The EEG shows a sudden increase of alpha brainwave activity. The recall cable is activated after 30 seconds. The cable snaps at the portal's opening, also severing the radio video umbilical. Visual observation from the portal's entrance shows that the umbilical and recall cable beyond the threshold remain slack. Recovery attempts are made with a variety of tools, including hooked poles. However, all attempts fail in a manner similar to the recall cable, with objects quickly becoming stuck after exposure to the environment beyond the portal's entrance. It is discovered that the metal braces remain immobile. Exploration ends after a period of 24 hours due to the forced closure of the instance. Metal braces and all tools used in the recovery attempts are severed. The D-Class is not recovered. Note, due to the attrition rate of D-Class and near certainty of hostile and or dangerous conditions beyond each instance, remote control drones with AV feedback are to be utilized for further tests involving SCP-2207. Test number 56. Exploration number 46. Exploration type. A remote controlled drone with AV feedback. Test time is 35 minutes, 45 seconds. Overview The breach point of Universe 56 appears to be within a burrow or small suburb outside a large city. The drone is deployed. Within one minute, the skyscrapers of the city are seen to sag, causing mild panic from individuals within the suburb. The sagging becomes more defined as the exploration continues. By three minutes, the skyscrapers appear to begin melting, and the sagging effect is now seen on the houses of the suburb. The sagging effect passes to individuals after five minutes. By ten minutes, almost all visible objects have turned to puddles, and the controller of the drone notes difficulty in controlling it. After fifteen minutes, the drone becomes unresponsive to the controls and falls to the ground. A second drone is deployed, while video data is still received from the first, which progressively distorts as the exploration goes on. After 25 minutes, the controller of the second drone reports difficulties with the drone's movement. The second drone is recalled, as no significantly new data was recorded. The metal braces are removed, and the instance is allowed to close. Inspection of the second drone shows that all load-bearing surfaces are heavily warped, with sagging effects on the remaining surfaces. The side of the metal braces exposed to Universe 56 are also found to be warped. Strength and compression tests indicate that the affected material does not deviate from non-affected material. Test number 126. Exploration number 116. Exploration Type Remote Control Drone with AV Feedback Test Time was 1 hour, 21 minutes, 36 seconds Overview The breach point of Universe 126 is a glade in a temperate forest during the day. The drone is deployed, and occasional faint, jagged lines are seen in the ground, sky, and air. The lines appear to be harmless to the drone. After three minutes, the lines are distinct enough to continuously observe, with the highest concentration forming around the portal. After ten minutes, sections of the sky are rendered as blue, with the phrase, No Signal, visible in white. Visual observation from the portal's instance indicates that these sections appear black. By twenty minutes, the entire sky is rendered in blue with the phrase no signal in white. Sunlight is still visible, 
although without an apparent source. 40 minutes into the exploration, sections of the ground are rendered in blue with the phrase, no signal, visible in white. One of these sections appears under a tree, which subsequently falls. The tree is not visible as it passes into the no signal patch. One hour into the exploration, the no signal patches begin to form in the air, with the ones on the ground expanding and new ones forming. After an hour and 15 minutes, the drone is recalled as the no signal patches make further exploration difficult. The controller is unable to successfully navigate the drone back, causing it to become disabled and fall into the ground. Two minutes later, a no signal patch forms on the ground beneath the drone and contact is subsequently lost. The metal braces from the portal are removed and the instance is allowed to close. Incident 2207-01 The following letter was found addressed to the site's administration. To whom it may concern, it has come to the attention of Redacted. that multiple recent Yagrasa Severance events are tied to actions performed by your organization, the SCP Foundation. As Universe 8D57-FE2Z-D, the universe your organization inhabits, has displayed limited multiversal travel capability prior to these incidents, it is believed that the actions performed by our organization are both without malice or full knowledge of the resulting repercussions. This correspondence is therefore considered to be a lawful cease and desist by order of Redacted. Further actions on your organization's part that contribute to a Yazarsil severance event will result in one or more of the following. 1. Universal censure of Universe 8D57-FE2Z-D and its inhabitants. 2. Fines upwards of 87 million five per geographical severance event. 3. Minimum imprisonment of 3,000 stellar cycles per geographical severance event. 4. Intervention by Redacted Armed Forces. Five, force your grass or severance event of universe 8D57-FE2Z-D. For your convenience, attached is a list of dates and times when your grass or severance events have been detected. Please be sure to refer to this list so that you may comply with this lawful order. We thank you for your cooperation. Signed, Sigma Sakratoshan, Office of Multiversal Incidents. After receiving this letter, all testing was halted in response. As of August 3rd, 2015, there has been no further correspondence from the entity Sigma Zotoxin or Redacted. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you liked my weird, somewhat monster Sean Connery kind of weird impression thing there that I did. I hope that worked out. <laughs> uh, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, unless that scared you away, I guess. Uh, Click the bell for notifications and check down in the description where I have a link to this author's page as well as related reading materials. Until next time.